weird myth for the viewer special. Have you ever heard that a piano can explode in a fire? No, I have not, but it does make sense because the strings are under a lot of tension. Who cares if it makes sense? We might get to see a piano explode. Ah, the humble piano. Tickle its ivories and you get beautiful music. But in a fire, could it turn from innocent keyboard into an instrument of mass destruction? Well, this sounds pretty straightforward. All we need to do is get a piano, build a fire under it, and see if it explodes. Well, hang on. I think before we do that, we need to find out how much tension the strings are under. Actually, I know the perfect people for that. And that perfect piano place... Ready to get your tune on? ...is owned by John Callahan, the Piano Man. So, the myth that we're working on mm -hmm. is that if you put a piano in a fire, it will explode. Wow. I've actually heard, I've heard people talk about that before. I, having never burned a piano myself, I don't know if that's true, but I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. To me, it sounds relatively plausible because, you know, I understand there's a lot of tension on the strings. Well, there sure is a lot of tension on the strings. In a piano, the steel wire is stretched across the cast iron plate and there's about 200 pounds of tension on each wire average. We have about 230 wires in the piano, so there's a total of over 20 tons of force trying to collapse the piano. Now that sounds promising. The strings stretched across the cast iron plate hold 40,000 pounds of pressure. And if the flames cause them to fail, hey presto, exploding piano. It's always a good day when you started at the bomb range. Callahan's have kindly given the team a baby grand to ignite. Now all they have to do is get it off the truck. The only piano sucks. And into position. I'm just going to do a little tension music. While Carrie does some, you know, actual work, Tori and Grant serenade her the only way they know how. Badly. Yeah. With the piano standing on its own legs, there's just one thing left to do. Tune it. All right, John, I know that tuning a piano at a bomb range is probably a pretty strange working condition for you, but we need to give this myth the best possible chance of working. So we need to get each one of these strings at the proper tension. I'll do my best. And as John brings the piano to perfect pitch, the guys pitch in to build the bonfire. So to all the piano aficionados out there, we just want to let you know, we love pianos. We're not enjoying this in the least. Light it on fire! Light it on fire! Okay, just a little bit. But this piano was destined for the dump. It's not salvageable. Unfortunately, it's beyond repair. So somebody had to do it. Might as well be us. So it's this baby grand's finale. But will the meltdown be a oh, letdown? No. Run, it's gonna explode! Or will it be a musical mushroom cloud? The piano is definitely on fire. Wow! Remember, if there's any truth to this myth, the 20 tons of tension in the strings has to be suddenly and explosively released. Seeing a little caving in. Maybe it'll, uh, it'll collapse on itself. That's the theory. But as the baby grand slowly but surely burns down to the ground, the myth of the exploding piano goes up in smoke. Well, no explosion. In fact, all we see that's left of the piano is a smoking hulk with a skeleton of the cast iron piece. You can still see some of the strings, which is not what I expected. I thought in all the heat, strings which are very thin compared to the cast iron would have been going bing, 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 bing. But we didn't hear anything. There's no way this thing will ever explode. And I'm so confident that that's why I'm this close to the piano. No matter how much tension is put on these wires, they're never going to explode and pop. Because as the wires heat up, the metal is just going to expand. It's just going to stretch. So you're never going to get this bing, bing, you know, snapping wires. And you're not going to get the exploding piano. It's just not physically possible. And that's the key. Yes, the tension will be released, but it happens slowly as the metal strings expand in the fire. The deformation and weakening of steel due to exposure to high temperatures is a gradual process. And since fires are by nature asymmetric, when multiple pieces of steel are exposed to fire, they tend to heat up at different rates. 
This is why it is unlikely for a steel frame building to catastrophically fail due to fire. And then there are failures, they tend to be localized, asymmetric, and spread over a long period of time. So why, on September the 11th, 2001, did the Twin Towers and Building 7 suffer sudden global symmetrical collapses at constant near freefall acceleration? And why can molten iron be seen pouring from the South Tower shortly before its collapse? Could scattered, modest fires on just a few floors cause such catastrophic failures? Or was something else at work that day? Don't worry about me. You need to make calls.